Hi everyone, Peter here once again. Welcome to my channel, Thailand Bound. Okay, today's a little bit different in that I'm reading these stories out while I'm in the UK, but I'm pre-recording them for Bangkok. I'm off to Bangkok, so by the time you're listening to this story, I will actually be in Bangkok. Uh, I didn't want to go through all the work of you know preparing the stories and everything when I'm on holiday in Bangkok, but on the other hand, there's a lot of guys who have signed up to hear the stories, so I thought I'd pre-record them so you've got at least something each week. It's a little bit watered down. Normally the upload's about 30 minutes. Uh, today it's about 10 minutes, but there's two, two nice stories here, so I'll just crack straight on with these. And uh, before I start, if any of the fashion police are out there, you'll have me bang to rights this time because I'm telling these uh, three lots of stories for each Saturday, all today, I'm pre-recording them, so it will appear that I'm wearing the same shirt every week because I know people like to catch me on that. All right, so here we go. Here's the first one. So the title of this uh, first story today, guys, is Lady Boy, Yes, No, or Maybe. I'm still not sure if this was a close encounter with the third kind or not. So after hearing my short story, tell me what you think. I was in Bangkok for a, a conference in the Sukhumvi area and being a married man, I didn't want to be seen wandering around Nana Plaza or Soy Cowboy. So I decided to go to check out some bars in Pat Pong for the night. It was around 2002 and I had not been in Pat Pong since the early 90s. I had enjoyed the company of the girls on two earlier nights, so I had no intention of taking a girl out of the bar and just went to enjoy the view and the drinks. I went to a big bar on the corner. I think it was called King's Castle. I had been out for a nice meal and drunk a fair amount of wine and was in good spirits. The girls seemed to be in two groups and a group of eight or ten girls came out to dance that were super cute. One girl in particular just seemed too cute to pass up so I asked her to join me for a drink. I quickly thought how I couldn't resist and decided to spend some time with her outside of the bar in a nearby hotel. I paid the bar fine and we headed out, but on checking my funds, I could see that I, although I had enough to pay her and get the room, I would have nothing left for a tip. So I decided to just take her back to my hotel 10 minutes away by taxi. The change of plans did not seem to please her and I could sense an attitude developing. She seemed to have a superior and bored look on her face. We got to the room and after a bit of chit chat and a drink, she suddenly got on her cell phone and then went into the bathroom to talk for a while. She was quite beautiful close up, but I was not feeling my typical physical response. Combined with the weird princess attitude she was displaying, I felt put off and decided to just pay her for her time and say goodbye. When she finally came out of the bathroom and there was no explanation or apology for the call, she came over to the bed and I calmly said I was just going to pay her and she could go. Most girls might have been happy with that, but surprisingly she started going on about don't you like me? Don't you think I'm sexy? She didn't seem to like being rejected, but had not worked very hard to stimulate, stimulate my interest. She left pretty quickly, and only years later did I start to wonder if she was a ladyboy. Evidence for her not being a ladyboy was, she was quite thin and feminine physically. She didn't have a big hands, Ad Adam's apples, etc. That ladyboys tend to have. I have been to a number of ladyboy bars since then with my girlfriend who finds them fun. It is always the same that when a girl that looks good dancing comes to drink with us, I immediately can notice that this is actually a guy sitting next to me and lose interest. I'm pretty confident in my ability to tell the difference, but I was fairly high up on the slippery slope at that point, so maybe I wasn't tuned in yet. Evidence for her being a ladyboy. The attitude I've been with lots of Thai bar girls and never dealt with one, anything like her princess attitude. Also, I later read someplace that this bar, the King's Castle, was well known for having ladyboy dancers mixed in the, with the girls, which is fairly unusual for go-go bars. Also, my lack of a typical physical response might have been due to my body knowing better than my eyes, that she was actually a he. Sometimes it may be better to let the little head do the thinking. What do you think? Well, yeah, it probably was a ladyboy for one reason, because I know exactly the bar you're talking about in Pat Pong. It's, uh, it's just across from Foodland, the big supermarket. You've got Pat Pong one, which is where the marketplace is. There's a cut through to the supermarket. And on that corner, 
I don't know if it's still there. It used to be a very popular bar. It's, it's a go-go bar, but it had a large seating area outside. Uh, and that was very popular. That was mainly ladyboys. So if he went and sat there and, and got chatting to a girl and with everything he said, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced, yes, it was, it was a ladyboy. All right, so let's move on to our, our second story today. So this story is entitled Pat Pong Second Floor Bar Adventures. Pat Pong was a major place for go-go bars back in the early 90s. Part of its charm was the touts on the street with their signs with the long list of shows, ping pong show, show smoking show, etc. I was happy in the go-go bars and never took girls out in those days due to the fear of diseases. The Lonely Planet guy book informed us of this. Out of curiosity, I decided to check one of these second floor places out and a tout quoted me 250 baht entry and he took me up to the bar. I sat at the counter and watched a few tricks and got talking to a girl on my left. Another girl came over and handed me some balloons which I held but I was busy talking to the girl. Suddenly I heard something whiz past my right ear. I looked at the girl on the stage and she was holding up a large blow dart with feathers on the end and was putting it in a tube. I suddenly understood stood what was happening and remembered the blow dart show was one of the acts on the touts list. I started to protest and say no way you almost hit me but all the girls started yelling don't move don't move so I didn't and the next stop popped the balloon and everyone clapped. I felt like an idiot and thought damn that could have just as easily gone in my eye. Pretty quickly I decided to leave and those who have been into these second floor bars will know what was coming next. Two very large guys were at the cash register by the door. They said, okay, that will be 5,000 baht. I said, no way. I was quoted 250 and the beer was 250, so you must mean 500. No, you need to pay 5,000, they said, blocking the door. I said, no, I'm not going to, I'll get the tout and we can sort this out. The guy said, no, he lied to you and that's not our problem. This went on for a while and I got irritated and threw 1,000 baht on the counter and pushed past the two guys who thankfully allowed me to leave. It, it turned out to be a pretty expensive walk on the wild side, and to be honest, even with the novelty, uh, was not all it was, it wasn't all that interesting. Never been back, live and learn. Okay, so uh, a couple of things on, on, on this story. So the first thing I say is don't go, because this is where you do tend to get ripped off. As you're walking through Pat Pong 1, where the market is, you've got the Golga bars and everything on, uh, on a level on the same level but there are doorways in between and if you go up them doors that's where they have these sort of cheesy shows and that's where more than likely I've never been ripped off in one of these places but these are the places you tend to get ripped off uh, and the story that this guy's just told is a typical story of how they rip you off they just lie to you and con you um, but on the other on the other side what I would say to you there are a lot of tourists who want to go to these shows just it's not a place you'd want to go back to because it, these shows are actually pretty boring and um you know, it's just a novelty if you've never been there. And, and I know a lot of uh, guys go there with their wives, girlfriends, um, air crew, because it's something you won't see anywhere else in the world. And to see a girl firing a dart at a balloon from a part of her body that you wouldn't expect to see her firing a dart from, it is a novelty. And, you know, people find it, um, not thrilling is not the right word, but they find it, it's something different, isn't it? So they want to go and look at it at least once. So what I'd say, if you do go to one of those shows, apart from... Um, I, I don't know what advice I can give you about not being ripped off, but um, if you do go, I, I went in the early days and one thing I would really strongly advise, the dart is actually a needle, a, a, a sewing needle, and it's wrapped up with um, paper at the end and they blow it and it's a needle flying through the air and it's a dark place. So if you ever go in there and they, and they put this show on, the last thing you want to do is sit there looking at the stage like this because you literally could get blinded. What I used to do on that, when they did this particular show, I'd put my hand over my drink and I wouldn't take it off until I knew that show was finished and I'd, I'd keep my head down. So, you know, the, you, you just know when, that, when that's happening. So hand on glass, uh, look down, and when it was finished, it was okay. But I, I didn't go back again. As I say, they're, they're quite, it's quite um, boring when you've been there once or, or, or twice. Okay, so that's it. Very, very short stories this week. As I say, I'm, I'm actually in Thailand now. I can't tell you anything about my schedule because I don't know because I'm not actually, as I'm recording this, I'm not actually in Thailand. 
but I am in Thailand as you hear the story. So the only thing I can tell you, there will be uh, another short watered down version of the stories next Saturday. So at least for the guys who've joined the um, who've joined the channel to hear the stories, you, you will get something. And of course, I, I will be doing plenty of filming when I'm in Bangkok. So hopefully I'll have a lot of nice foot footage for you when I come back. All right, guys, thanks for listening to me again. And uh, I'll talk to you again next Saturday.